everyone and welcome to another flight within our trips into the most widely known modern popular African music. While our first trip presented the trajectory of Nkumba dance from Congo Empire to Cuba, this second part will present the experiences and transformations that happened there in Cuba to produce different types of Cuban rumba. I can't wait to reach the following part of this epic to talk about the birth and rise of the Congolese rumba itself. But for today, please stay with me in Cuba. African History Daily by my daddy. Have you ever wondered, while listening to the first part of this rumba series, how you would spell the word rumba, with or without an H after the R? Well, I know it sounds like a weird question, and one could think it doesn't make much difference anyway. Well, surprisingly, these two ways of writing the word rumba, while looking so close, actually describe two different types of dances, which do not have much in common. The rumba with H appeared as a ballroom dance in the 1920s in the United States and Europe, and comes from a Cuban tradition called son. You can listen to that style in the famous album from Buena Vista Social Club, released in 1996, which I have added to a Spotify playlist that I started based on this rumba series. In contrast, the rumba spelled without an H was born in the working class neighborhoods of cities in Cuba, especially in the courtyard of buildings called the Solares, where it acquired its festive character. Rumba is clearly not the most famous Cuban style of music abroad, but it is certainly one of the most ancient ones and one that still diffuses currently in the most popular Cuban music style like salsa. Many mythical groups that play rumba, such as Yoruba Andabo, Los Muñequitos de Matanzas, Los Papines, were created in the last century and are still active today. Most of them remain very attached to the mythological and cultural roots of rumba. There are four main rumba styles currently played, Colombia, Yambu, Guaganco, and Guarapachango but all of them have a common ancestor, which is the now extant Sigiria. And Sigiria itself comes from the Palo. Then the question is, what is the Palo? <laughs> the Palo was a preparation dance for slaves for combat, but also a religion of the Congo Empire's people. Unlike the Sigiria, Palo is still played today in some of the provinces in Cuba, and the set of instruments playing the palo are still called ngoma, from the name of those famous Congo drums that we discussed in the first part. On those drums are still inscribed Congo figures and symbols, and the percussionist is also using bells on his wrist. I wanted to give a brief description of those main Cuba rumba styles, starting with the Columbia. The name Columbia is derived from from that of a train station in the city of Matanzas where the dance appeared. It is an exclusively male dance where the participants take turns competing in virtuosity. Although secular, it uses elements of the Akabwa and Yoruba ceremonial dances that are mixed with the evocation of daily activities during work in the plantations. The virtuoso character of Colombia is expressed in particular by the speed of execution of the dance. On the other hand, there is the yambu. Yambu is a style that comes from the term yambula, which means land of whirlpools, in reference to the Briumba hills in the Congo land, where whirlpools are very present. Men and women dance on the yambu and they start by turning on themselves to evoke those wheel pulls. By doing so, they can get quite dizzy and that dizziness was associated with the process of getting in touch with ancestors. It is danced in pairs but also at a slower pace 
and as a result, it is associated with older dancers. A third type of Cuba rumba style is the guaganco. It is the most popular form of Cuba rumba and was born around the Cuban independence war. Despite its possible links with Spanish flamenco, it is above all an evolution of previously described yambu. The basic instrument is of course the congas, the ngomas, I mean the drums, but also an important accessory, the spoons called vacuano in Spanish. Vacuano is actually the name of the main movement that characterizes this couple dance, which is faster, like a game of cat and mouse between the two dancers. As you can see, there are many varieties of rumba styles in Cuba, and maybe by now you are confused. If you are confused, then it may be reassuring for you to know that all rumba songs are introduced by an instrument solo, whether it is congas, bugle, or songs which announce the type of rumba that is going to be played. So now it's up to you to guess the type of Cuba rumba from the following excerpt. My African cliché of the day is a date, November 30th, 2016. On that day, UNESCO added Cuban rumba to the list of intangible cultural heritage of humanity. And that same day, on the same list, the same honor was given to another historical monument called Belgian beers. <laughs> well, I guess both of them can make you dizzy, so why not? <laughs> In any case, Congo and Belgium destinies are really tied forever to each other. <laughs> On a more serious note, can you imagine how far this Congo Empire music has come through centuries? It is such a great recognition for all those rumba musicians who used to be arrested and beaten by the police in Cuba. Those musicians are the true and sung victims of the then glorified open policies and attempt to erase completely any Africanity from the cultures in Cuba and many Latin American countries. Speaking of a day in history, on which day did the Nkumba dance turn back to its origin in the ancient Congo kingdom? And how did it become the famous Congolese rumba? But also, is there only one type of Congolese rumba? Those are questions for our future flights. And until then, choose carefully the cause of your dizziness. Thank you and goodbye.